I'm Lars Seltsos, I'm the founder and CEO of Boost AI. And what we do is we make conversational AI for enterprises, where we specialize on conversational AI at scale. I think, I think a big problem today is that there's so much information around, so many options, uh, and just finding what you need is really difficult with, with all kinds of other systems. And also when you find uh, what you need, you're giving way too much information, so extracting the portion that's just for you is also very complicated. And this is not just for informational, this is also when you want to do something. For example, if you want to block your card in your bank, you first need to find the area in the web bank, in the menu where you block the card. But then you also need to figure out in that whole area, how do you actually get to block your card? Um, so I think it's all about getting the information you need and then being able to get exactly the portion you need straight away in an easy way. That's a real big challenge we can solve with conversational AI. First of all, we need to start with just how do we define value with conversational AI? And for me, it's a very simple equation. It's the amount of interactions multiplied uh, by the value per interaction. And of course, the amount of interactions is very easy to, to measure. And then you can debate back and forth quite a bit on you know, the exact value of an interaction, but that equation is still very solid. And I think that really easily comes to mind when you think about that is something I like to call the narrow scope dilemma. Let, let's say you're a bank and you build a bot that only understands cards. And maybe 20% of traffic on chat is related to cards and 2% of web traffic goes to cards related pages. Then you mainly just have two options with, with this bot. You can either put it everywhere and you get a horrible experience because you know 80% of traffic is not related to cards and get a bad answer. Or you can put it on only the card related pages, but then you only capture 2% of the traffic and you get very low amount of interactions, which if you go back to the equation, gives you a very low value creation. Uh, so I think the really the key to conversational AI at scale is the ability to cover everything with a broad scope but at the same time be able to drill down to very deep accuracy. Uh, like for example, if um, I say I want to block my card, and you just say, sure, I can help you with cards. It's not very helpful. So you need to give that precise answer to the user exactly what they need. And that's really how you get success with conversational AI at scale. I'd like to start with a pretty simple example uh, that I like to call the Lamborghini example. Uh, let's say you have a car store uh, and they sell cars uh, and you have a you know, red Ferrari, you have a black Porsche and blue Bugatti, uh, but you also have a yellow Subaru. And then someone comes and says, uh, I want a yellow Lamborghini. And then kind of how other uh, NLP technologies works is they just look, does my question look a lot more like one of my answers than the others? And then you probably match the yellow Lamborghini to the yellow Subaru because they're both yellow. But of course, the user probably wanted a sports car. Um, and what we have is our proprietary technology, which we call automatic semantic understanding. Um, and that lets us understand which concepts are important when, not only if the question looks more like one of the answers than the others. Uh, and this really helps with, for example, reducing false positives by over 90%. And a false positive means the robot answers confidently, but it's wrong, which is one of the most annoying user experiences you can have. But this also lets us handle a lot more sophisticated scenarios like multi-intents. It also helps with the robot suggesting new things it should learn and so on.